Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Tristan Barracks here, The Digital Storyteller, and I'm super excited to be with you once again for another episode of Cinecut, where we will be talking about social media templates. This is a life hack. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Woo! All right, so guys, we are jumping into Final Cut Pro, and I'm gonna show you basically the templates that I've created uh, to really speed up my workflow when it comes to creating things for my, uh, or videos for my social media platforms. We open up Final Cut Pro. Um, by default, you will obviously see whatever project you have open. Right now, I have two projects open. I have New Test, and I also have Social Media, uh, size templates. So I already went ahead and I created a, a set of templates based upon the requirements of each platform. So I'm actually going to change this to a list view. So it's a little bit easier to understand. So I have, I have three, I have about five different events here. I have my Facebook event. I have Instagram, I have LinkedIn, I have Pinterest and I have Twitter. These are all of sort of the platforms that I that I use on a day to day basis, on a week to week basis. And what I found is that every time I was trying to create content, it was a little bit challenging because uh, or time consuming in, in, in the sense, because what would happen is I would have to start a new project. You know, I'd go up, I would have to go to new a new library and then I would start a new library and then I would have to start a new project and then I would have to finagle through all of the different types of sizes that each platform requires. So I, I decided, you know what, let's skip all that and let's actually make a library that's all built around templates. So the first template that I have or event I have is my Facebook templates. So if I double click on Facebook here, this is your normal sort of 19, uh, 1920 by 1080 template. And then we also have our portrait style, uh, 1080 by 1920 template. And again, these are all just pre-made. I just did a, a quick Google search and I set these up and then obviously Instagram has a ton of different layouts. So I have IGTV template. Um, and then I have a, if you look right here, I actually have a 24 frames per second and I also have a 30 frames per second. And I did that specifically for Instagram because a lot of times you may be filming in 60 frames, 120 frames, 30 frames, 24 frames, different types of frame, uh, frame rates. And that brings a different aesthetic. So just to keep things copacetic or keep things easy, uh, easy to recognize and organize, I just created these two sections, uh, both 24 and uh, 30 frames per second. This is my Instagram stories template. This is my uh, Instagram landscape, uh, Instagram portraits, and Instagram square. So as you can see, I kind of uh, color code, coded them as well. I'm gonna show you a few different things really, really quickly. Uh, don't wanna take up too much of your time, but if you wanted to create your own uh, particular template or, or set up something like this in Final Cut, you can go to file, uh, go to new and under new, we're going to go under new uh, event, right? And you can knit, label this. I don't know. Let's just call this. Uh, I'm just going to call it Tristan. This is just another section. Okay. And let's say I had a, my own platform um, under this particular event that we created. I can go back to file new and create a new project. When that project shows up, there's a few things that you can do. You can obviously name your project. You can pick what sizes you want, right? So it has 1080p, 1080p I, um, it has 720p NTSC PAL, 2K, 4K, 5K, 360. But at the bottom is the most important area, which is uh, where it says customize or custom. And this is where you can customize the sizing. So you can actually put in uh, the height and the width or the width and I, I should say the uh, width and the height uh, in your in your dimensions fields. And then what that will allow you to do is that will allow you to then get the exact sizing of whatever platform you're trying to produce for. So in this case, let's say we're doing a portrait mode for Instagram, right? I believe that is 1080 by 13, 1350. 
Okay. Um, um, and then the other thing you can do is you can also pick the frame rate, but I'm going to keep the frame rate as, you know, 2398. I'm just going to hit OK. And it's going to automatically create this project for me. And you can see the sizing um, as it shows up, as it should show up. So once you have formatted all your templates and you're at the place that you want them to be and you're comfortable with them, you're happy with them, uh, what's next? How do you get these templates uh, into a new project, right? Because at the end of the day, you want to speed up the process. So you're not actually going to go into these templates and start working in the templates at all. That's not what this is for. This is just uh, a placeholder, right? These are just there to be easily copied and duplicated. So the way that you can actually copy one of these templates into a new project, a project or open up a project. In this case, I have um, a project called new test. It's just a, a basic project and it has a style sheet that I'm working on um, as we speak. And the style shoots all set up there, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back into the Instagram template area and I'm going to take the IGTV 24 frame rate and I'm going to go into IGTV and I'm going to select the IGTV 24 frames per second template and I'm just going to click and drag it into my event. Now by default, because I'm dragging this project from one library to another, Final Cut's always going to give me a warning and ask me, um, "You do you want to copy this project or make a copy of this project in this new library called New Test? And I'm gonna say, okay, yeah, I do. So once I press okay on that, now when I go up to the very top where it says projects, I now have IGTV 24 frame rate project and made a carbon copy of it. When I double click on it, it now opens up in my timeline ready to be edited. And then from there, all I have to do is find some clips. I'm going to change the view of this so it's a little bit easier to see. All I have to do is find some clips that stand out. I'm just going to delete this brown background and I am going to reduce the sound on this. And by default, you may look and say, well, okay, Tristan, so I got this clip in here, but it's not reverting or it's not automatically transforming into the size of the actual window or the frame. Well, that's fine. All we're going to do is we're going to hit our resize button, which is at the bottom of this viewer window here. And once it turns blue and we get these blue dots around the frame, we can actually drag and make it bigger, smaller, shorter, taller, uh, depending on on what we want. So I'm going to just drag this because it's 4K. I can drag it in by 200, 300%. I'm just going to reposition it. So I'm going to add a few other things just really quickly so you can see what we can actually do with this, right? I just added in a few different clips. And now you're, you're probably thinking, okay, now we have to reposition each one. Well, not necessarily. I'll show you a little a little hack. Um, if you copy, so if you hold Command and press C, Command C, or if you go up to Edit and Copy, what that will do is that will actually copy all of the attributes of a clip in Final Cut. You can only do this per clip, and then you can actually add those attributes or um, conform the other clips that you that you have selected to those attributes of the original clip. So I'll show you what I mean. So I selected this clip. I, I held down command and I press C and that copied the whole clip and all of its attributes. And then I'm going to just select, well, I'm going to select which two am I going to, I have to, I can't do this one and I'll show you why I can't do a couple of them, but I'm going to select the ones that are all horizontal clips. I selected them and now I'm going to hold command shift. V. I'm going to hold command shift and then press V three, two and one. And this window comes up and this is the paste attributes. So this is actually cool. Um, what Final Cut allows you to do is it allows you to page paste specific attributes from the original clip that you copied from. So if I wanted to use the repositioning and the scale without having to do it myself, that's done as well as I also reduce the volume on uh, of this clip. So it'll actually apply that attribute as well. So if I click on paste, now all of a sudden everything is repositioned. 
without me having to put too much work on it. Now, it may not be perfect, like for instance, with this clip here. So I'll just go back to the reposition tool and now I'll reframe the model again. And I'll probably do the same thing here. This might be a little bit too big. Or no, I'll just reposition the, fly, the flower a bit. Press done and we're good. Now for these two or three clips here, I shot them vertically already. So because I already shot them vertically already, which means I, I didn't shoot them horizontally, I didn't shoot them landscape, I actually turned my camera like this and I shot it in a way where it was actually shooting sideways essentially. All I have to do for this for these ones are I have to rotate them and then scale them slightly larger. So I'm gonna hit my position tool again. And then you see this little circle in the middle on this little arm, this is our rotation arm. So the smaller the rotation arm, the faster it goes. The wider the rotation arm, I draw the rotation arm, the slower it goes. Now, if I wanna make sure that's going in equal chunks as I'm rotating it, once I hold the handle down and I'm, and I'm holding it down, I have to hold down shift as well. And then the handle now becomes, um, or excuse me, the arm now becomes yellow. And now as I turn it, it's turning counterclockwise or clockwise or whatever direction I want in equal parts. And once I have it to the position I want, I can release. And now the only thing that's left is to scale it to where I want it. And again, this is just really, really quick. Obviously, I would do some more finessing. I would I would grab more um I would grab some more music or I would do some more work on color correction and things of that nature. But this is the power that we have when we set up our templates ahead of time. Now, if you're a Final Cut Pro user, I have something special for you. If you're interested in getting these templates completely for free, all you have to do is like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notifications button um, and you will get this library for free. I will send you a Dropbox link directly to this library and you can download it and you can use these templates completely free of charge. Well, that's the end of another episode of Cinecut with your host, me, your boy, Tristan Barracks. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Peace. Hey everybody, Tristan Barracks here, The Digital Storyteller. I just want to say thank you for watching another video of mine that I've created for you so that you can develop as a storyteller and become a dope creative. If you are not a subscriber of this channel, please consider subscribing as well as if you are a subscriber, make sure that you hit that notification button so then you know when another new video has been uploaded to my channel.